Maybe stand. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, you will not fear. Though the earth be changed, though the mountain be removed, the heart of the sea, though the water, though the roar, and be troubled, though the mountain shake, the swelling thereof. We will not fear. He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in whom I trust. For he shall deliver thee from the snares of the fallen and from the noose of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his pinion and under his wing shall thou take refuge. His truth is a shield and a buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrows that fleeth by day. For the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that waiteth wait at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not doubt, O Lord, on my refuge and strength. A very brother help in times of trouble. We do not fear that he is by our side. I will lift up my eyes into the hills. For it's coming to my head. My head coming from the Lord. We are here for a celebration for the home going of Sister Nanny Oliver Morton. Celebration of remembrance and love. I believe the word said to be absent for your body and to be present with the Lord. Well, this is not a sad occasion. This is a celebration. We all have to do this one day. We all have to cross this bridge. It's a celebration of the life and legacy of Sister Nanny Morton. At this time, we'll move on with a selection by Sister Herman.
We'll move right along the reading of the scripture. I'll read the Old Testament. Pastor Wimbush read the New Testament. Then after the prayer of consolation by Pastor Hickman. For the reading of the Old Testament is Psalm 121. <clears throat> Psalms 121. It reads like this. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He will keep you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shed at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. He shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. I'll read you the New Testament. John 14, 1 through 7. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in you. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and I, if I go up and prepare a place for you, I will come, come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may also. And where I go, ye know. Thomas said unto him, uh, We know not whether thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. <clears throat> no man cometh unto the Father but by me. The seventh verse said, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. May God have a blessing to the reading of the word. God bless you.
Let me first bring greetings from the Gethsemane Presbyterian Church, of which many of the Morton family have been, have been and still are members, active members, good, active, and contributing and giving members. And on, on behalf of our church and our church family, many of whom are here today, our deepest sympathy from this loss of still another member of this family. Just prior to my prayer today, I would like to especially acknowledge my dear friend and one of our elders in our church, and that is the son of this lady today, and that is none other than Curtis Morton. You don't get a chance because men don't do this very often, and I wish we'd do it a little more to be a little more supportive, but I've often told Curtis, and I hope he takes me as seriously as I mean it, that if I had a brother, I would want him to be like him. Amen. And to a large degree, even as a son, I would like to have emulated to a large degree the care that he gave, not only to his own mother, but to, I've seen it with aunts, seen it with uh, uncles, aunt and laws. I've seen it with other people as well. And having gone through what Curtis is going through, he and I have talked about this many times prior to this occasion. Um, and I told him, you can't possibly imagine the aches and pains that will come to you. And there'll be a day when all of a sudden, as many of you already know, you will walk through your house. You'll hear a song, oh, when I've come to the end of my journey. Or you'll hear or see something that takes place in Galilee or a place that you thought was far distant in your memory and all of a sudden, my goodness, a handkerchief will be waiting you, awaiting you hopefully, and if not, you're gonna just sit there and wherever you are, pull to the side and let your tears flow. It's okay to do so, it's very natural. So as we come to you today and extend our prayer and support to you, please know that it is from all of us at Gethsemane because we have respected over the years our families, and we have respected in particular the care. Curtis, I say this as one who is both your friend, your brother, and your pastor. And I'm paraphrasing another member of our church. Go slow. You can do more. Go fast. You won't last. Curtis, slow down a bit now. You have done all that you can do. Trust me. Let us pray. Lord, you are the giver and you're the taker of life. You give unto us the beauty and joy of uh, everything that comes, beautiful days. A few days heavy rain, Lord, and then all of a sudden beautiful, beautiful sunshine. Wonderful, wonderful change in atmosphere, wonderful change, O oh Lord, in temperatures. And today as we come and we gather, and today as we seek out hollow ground, today as friends have traveled from far and near, as family members have gathered, as friends have gathered, as associates have gathered, as members of a great hunting club have come in support of, Heavenly Father, we come to you today and say thank you. We thank you for this, the life of our sister, we thank you for this, the life of this family. None of us, though we have been down that path before, none of us knows because this is a new path for each member of that family. And as we come unto you today, we ask that you will indeed comfort them during the difficult times that are here today, the difficult times that will be ahead of them. We ask that you will give them wonderful support in terms of the memory process and allow all the things, both good and bad, because that's what family life is. They're good days. They're bad days. They're days where you sit up and you wonder, Lord, have I given all I can as a caregiver? Is there anything else left in me to give? Could I have done more? What happens if I had just been there a moment or two early? And then hopefully, oh Lord, reality sets in and we sit up and say, this is God's time. I may have been a moment late. But how am I to know that God's time would not still prevail? 
And so if we recognize that this is God's time, we recognize that this is God's world, we recognize that this is God's earth, we recognize that that is from whence we came and that is for which we are now promised. And so today we come to you and we ask for family members who have seen so much loss over the last few years, so much loss, that there be, oh Lord, just a total enveloping, enveloping feel to you today and allow, allow you to surround this family, surround all of their loved ones and let them know that they're not alone in this. This journey is one that, thank God, it's promised to all of us. I often say, Lord, as you know, that death is the one thing that keeps us halfway human in this world. So we ask that as we come together today as family and as support and as friends to this family, as church members, that we come and say to you, we care for you, we care for you deeply, we love you, we will support you, we will continue to pray for you. Mm -hmm. And each and every morning, when you too shall awaken, and all of a sudden you shall walk over and say, my God, there's just a moment of memory that is just perking through to me at this time, that you sit and give some reflection, and if you will, just turn to the most beautiful portion of the body and recognize that your help comes from the Lord. Recognize too that your strength comes from the Lord. And recognize too that this the servant of the Lord who has now gone home to be received in glory, that this servant too recognized that strength. God has chosen to remove still another fabric of the blanket of humanity. And yet the blanket of humanity still continues. It spreads from Georgia to New Jersey. It stops every now and then in Drake's. It goes to Lynchburg. It goes to Connecticut. And this is the blanket of humanity that all of us are still covered by. So today, our God, we ask that you be with this family. Watch over them. Keep them. Protect them. And Heavenly Father, on the mornings and nights when the tears just have to flow, let them flow. It's all right to cry. It's all right. And that old saying, oh Lord, though it's in a song, that joy is going to come in the morning. Sometimes the morning just doesn't seem to come. So we ask our Heavenly Father that whether it be morning, noon, or night, that you be there and that you watch over this family. Hear our prayer today, our Heavenly Father. Be with us throughout this day. And at the close of this day, let us all reflect and say we thank God for this, the life of our sister. But we thank God even more for the beauty of the memories of this, the life of our sister. In God's name we pray, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we ask that it so be lifted, so be given. Hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. We want to thank Pastor Wendler for the scripture reading of the Old Testament and Pastor Hickman for the words of conservation and Prayer of consolation. Now the selection.
a message of sympathy in the loss of your loved one. These words of deep sympathy are sent with the hope that as time go by, cherish memory will help bring you in a peace and make your loved one seem still very close to you. May the memory uh, that, uh, mean, uh, that means the most to you live forever in your heart. We will miss, we will miss Nanny. She was a wonderful neighbor. Love and prayers and deepest sympathy, James, Joan, and Jerry. With sympathy for the loss of your mom. Her voice will let holy memories you hold. Her smile will warm you through stories we told. Her love will touch you in spirit each day. Her life will be treasured in beautiful ways. For this is what the Lord said. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. Isaiah 66, 12. Pray in your comfort by memory, that you are comforted by memories and held close in God's love as you grieve. From Hannah Rose Hunting Club. <coughs> You'll never walk alone. Words of reassurance by Helen Steiner Rice. At, this, at, at times like these, it is only God who can speak the words that calm the sea, still the wind, and ease the pain. So lean on him, and you will never walk alone. They who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40 and 31. To Curtis, trusting that the Lord will be very close to you now, and hoping it comforts you to know that your loved one is safe in his arms with sympathy and caring from James and Valerie Ward. In the loss of your mom, if someone had asked what the best part of her life was, I think she would have said, it was being your mom. May all that she was and all that she meant to you live on in your life and in your heart. Jeffrey's funeral home and staff. We have the resolution. St. Louis Baptist Church, 111 Factory Hendrick uh, Highway, Charlotte Courthouse, Virginia. Egan Robert B. Warden, Chairman of the Human Board. Egan is Barry Warden Smith, Church Clerk, January the 25th. <coughs> No matter what, you, what your trials are, or how big your mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. He'll go, all, go to all extremes. So if your cross seems hard to bear, and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will be there to see you through. We, the members of the St. Louis Baptist Church, want the family to know that our hearts are with you as we gather to bid a Christian goodbye to a precious and valid, valid woman, Sister Nanny D. Morton, the mother of a precious son. Whereas Sister Nanny D. Morton was a reverent woman who loved the Lord and a very independent person who would perform any task and instilled in her family to follow her example. She loved her family with a gentle yet stern combination which only she possessed. Whereas, not only is this a loss of a devoted mother, but she was also a, con a confident person and a close friend to her family and other relatives. Sister Nanny was always available to share an encouraging word and demonstrate a strong support. Whereas, the passing of our beloved sister is heaven's gain. However, there is a human tie that has been broken, which bleeds the heart in agony and pain. We are encouraged and consoled in the words of Jesus Christ who said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace the family because all of us have a common bond 
that will connect us for the rest of our lives. We cannot replace this with any, but will attempt to demonstrate our love for you. To the family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great. We also want you to know that we share in your sorrow. But more importantly, we recognize that the loss is heaven's gain. When it is all over, we would like you to remember. In case there's a time when you just need some cheer, in case there's a problem that you would like someone to hear, in case there's a favor you would like us to do, we're here if you need us to help see you through. Humbly submitted on this 25th day of January 2017. Deaconess Mary M. Smith, the clerk, Reverend Henry L. Fleshman, Jr., pastor. Gethsemane Presbyterian Church, Post Office Box 17, Greek Spring, Virginia. Letter of Comfort. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. John 11, 25 through 26. It is with heartfelt sympathy that we offer our sincere condolences to the family of Mrs. Nanny Venable Morton. The Gethsemane Presbyterian Church family was blessed to have known a woman of grace and strength. God, the maker of heaven and earth, the giver of life and love, has opened the window of heaven to receive unto him, unto himself, the dear soul of Mrs. Morton, who was loving, faithful, and dedicated to God, her family and community. We are bound to her son, Curtis, her sister-in-law, June, and the entire family through <coughs> Christian love and sympathy experiencing their sorrow as our sorrow, enfolding them in our prayer. During this hour of bereavement and transition, we encourage you to continue to stand on the promise of God that has, that has brought you thus far and to reflect on the, her legacy with great joy and appreciation. Hold on to God's unchanging hand and hold on to your faith. Be ye steadfast and unmovable in the work of the Lord. Remember, God is always with you. He hears your unspoken thoughts, and He understands your pain. He, he's our greatest source of strength and our, our never-failing friend. We are thinking of you and sharing with you in your time of grief. May God, richest blessing be with you, Reverend. Garrison Michael Hickman, Pastor, Elder Jacqueline Holcomb, Clerk of the Session. St. Michael Baptist Church, Great French, Virginia, with Henry G. Clerk, Deacon Charles T. Smith, Senior, Chairman of the Board. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Revelation 2.10. We, the St. Michael Baptist Church family, Reverend James Good, our pastor, extend to the family of Mrs. Nanny Venable Morton our deepest sympathy, prayers, and love during this difficult time. We want you to know that we share in your loss and that our hearts are with you as we gather to bid a Christian woman of faith goodbye. We also say to the family, no matter what your trials are, or how big your mountains seem, the Lord is there to see you through. If Mrs. Morton could speak, she would probably say the word from the popular poem, don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following the path God has laid, you see. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it all. We console the family and we believe, also believe in the word of Jesus in John 14 that encourages us. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. Sorrowfully submitted to St. Michael Baptist Church family, Reverend James Good, Pastor, <coughs> Mrs. Family Jones, Assistant Clerk. <coughs> Galilee Baptist Church, 99 Scoffertown Road, Randolph, Virginia. Reverend James L. Linden, Pastor, Deacon George E. Smith, Chairman of the Board, Deacon and Sharon Stovall, Clerk. Church Resolution. May God make grace, excuse me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. We, the member of, members of Galilee Baptist Church, come together in reverent prayer. As our hearts are deeply saddened, as we say farewell to our dearly beloved mother in Christ, Sister Nanny D. Morton. Whereas, Sister Nanny, has been a strong, long-standing, prominent member here at Galilee and throughout the community at large, a loving and affectionate mother to her son, Curtis, one who also shared the same motherly love with all of us. Whereas not only is this a loss, yet another devoted Christian mother, she was also well known by all for her generosity and helping hand, her smile and laughter, as she filled in on key positions in, within the church. One who worked in many capacities within the church, most notably and affectionately on the food serving committee when she did not mind give, where she did not mind giving you a second helping on your first plate when you went to the line. <laughs> Whereas it was through her chosen profession as a housewife and co-father who worked alongside her husband, she demonstrated a, far, a firm commitment of love for family, relatives, and friends. That same commitment was exalted in her faith for her Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore, be it resolved, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. We shall forever miss Sister Nanny, but we realize that God dispatched his heavenly angels to receive her unto him, and to let us know that he loves her best and has called her home to an eternal rest. Further be it resolved that the members of the Galilee Baptist Church offer our heartfelt sympathy for your loss and the loss of our beloved church mother. Please know that we stand ready with open arms to support the family in Christian love. If there is anything that we can do to lighten your burden, please do not hesitate to let us know. Further, be it resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family and a copy placed in the archives of the church. Respectfully submitted. The Reverend James E. Lindsay, Pastor Deacon Sharon, Deaconess Sharon Stickwall, Clerk. You can join E. Smith, share of the board. I have one other item that I'd like to present. This is a plaque. On behalf of the Galilee Baptist Church, we would like to show our appreciation for the faithfulness of Sister Nanny Morton. As the word says, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Matthew 25, 21. Galilee Baptist Church, 2017. That ends the reading of the acknowledgement. And what I'd like to do is present this to my dear brother Curtis at this time. So he has it in hand. 
arms and literally <coughs> show a love for your mother for Mother Gay Gallery. I thank you. Thank you, Deacon Smith, for the admonishment and church resolution. At this time, we have reflection coming from the Deacon Lobby. I'm not sure exactly where I'm supposed to stand, but I'm stand here uh, with permission from the Pastor giving honor to the family, Brother Curtis, his son, only son, Dia, the only sister, and the only sibling remaining uh, to the director, funeral director, Mr. P, and to the honorable <coughs> Ministers, we recognize and honor all of you. I was asked to speak in behalf of the family in remembering Nanny, Venerable Morton. I can say truthfully, without trying to make a speech, that she was possibly my best friend in life. Uh, she was born to Miss Ethel Bimble and Mr. <coughs> I was born to Nanny Robinson and Robert Robinson. My mother always talked to me of her different little things. She said when she got married, uh, she wanted to have a big family. So uh, she was watching Miss Ethel. Alpha was four, and Ace, my sister, was one. And then Dia was born, and my sister Roberta was born. <laughs> then I was born in 1932, April 13, and Sister Nanny came along uh, in May 16, 1932. And Nanny and I have always had a close relationship because we did everything the same way. We are from little farm families, tobacco farmers. My mother was a teacher, but couldn't teach because she had to have her little farm. Very same thing with Miss Ethel. Nanny's uh, mother, uh, they did a little teaching maybe, and they went to a time of and got his teaching certificate and, and taught some. But my mother said that uh, she wanted you to keep up with Miss Ethel. They wanted to have, they farm families, they wanted to have a large family. So uh, when Nanny was born, I was born, Mama said she had to keep on having children, but Miss Ethel kept on. But something happened when, when I was uh, brought forth. I, I was the last of my family. Not that my mother wanted that to happen, but I was the last. And she kept having children. I think she had about, about three or four boys afterwards. And that's what the uh, father wanted to the boys to help her on that farm. <laughs> so, but we went to Galilee School. Manny and I went to Galilee School at about, I guess, about seven, eight, ten people in that little class. And we talked about every kind of thing. And that was Galilee School, that was Galilee Church. And I heard from it from Galilee. And then I started teaching in some school the Bible about Galilee. Oh, Jesus Christ coming from Galilee. <laughs> I thought he came from, from around here. <laughs> So, uh, and then I always uh, paid attention to what was going on in church. We had a Reverend Stewart. He stayed here about 33 years. 
and he had a son named Clarence Stewart, and they called him Little Stewart. Danny came to school telling me about Little Stewart. I think Danny fell in love with Little Stewart. <laughs> he was a young pastor, very dynamic, you know. His father was one of these common sense type preachers, uh, Reverend Stewart. He was here a long time, but his son was very high. He was the kind of preacher that draws the crowd. But anyway, Nanny and I just talked about every kind of thing because she was always there. Then we went to high school. And sometimes boys messed around in the hall a little while. But we were in all the same classes. Nanny was saying, uh, I would come in a little late. Nanny said, what you doing? I said, I'm just, I, I'm on time. I'm here. <laughs> so, but she always, you know, felt like, uh, the class probably ought not get started until I get there. So she, she and I were very, very good friends at that And for the farm to come. I, I was always a very close friend, but we were never sweethearts. So we, we had to go to the farm. And uh, so I, my dad had bought a pickup. And so I drove. And Nanny went with I was trying to go with Ruth Mosley. I looked at Ruth Mosley. And she had offered invitations to John Mosley. So we, the four of us, and then my dad picked up, I'm driving with Ruth Mosley, John Mosley. <laughs> so we, we had a great time at the prom and so forth. But we did all these different kinds of things. Got baptized at the same Got religion at the same time. Got the religion here. I think it was about 22 or 23 people got religion the same night. All of us got baptized at the same time. We had a little farm over where I lived. And they, that's where they used to baptize. They would let baptize all of us. So uh, I could <coughs> As long as Nanny was around, I couldn't do anything too out of the ordinary because she kept an eye on me, you know, make sure I do right. <laughs> and, uh, and we just had that kind of relationship all the way through. And after I went away and worked and came back home, I would visit Nanny sometime. And I would tell Nanny, come see me. She said, oh yeah, I'm coming. And she come down there and stay about ten minutes. And she, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta see them for that little courage. <laughs> and uh, but you know, she would always tell me, "I'll catch you later." You know, I said, "Man, it's just stay here longer." You know, because I go up there stay a long time. She showed me her garden and everything she's been doing, and just that you know. Tell me all about what's going on. So then it just was life to me. I mean, that was just pure. I, I, hardly, I hardly would know how to say anything. I wouldn't try to say anything so unusual to hear other than then she was a good person. Very good. Always doing the right thing, trying to do the right thing, just like we all are, most of us. And she <laughs> was concerned about people. And just happy, happy all the time. Uh, she came to school happy, you know, and she, uh, whatever went on, it was just great. And uh, you know, so uh, it was just, just that way. So I always felt at home around her, just like family. Because, you know, we did the same. My father talked about farming, get the tobacco in, selling tobacco. And Mr. Butcher talked about the same thing. So Dan and I came back to school. Your dad is sold to back here. And all those kind of little things that people talk about. So I would miss her a lot. And truly, she's a great person. And I think, <coughs> I, I don't think it, but I'm going to say this. I'm a deacon of the church. And I, I I've been here, I was digging here 15 years before I left to go to Hampton. And I'm always, I'm a yoga, but I'm always serious about 
Christianity. I don't have any doubts about Jesus Christ, Savior of the world. I don't have any doubts about heaven. And I don't have any doubts about where Nanny going. She's going to be up there. And she beat me there. She's going to say, Don't I take you so long? <laughs> So, uh, Brother Curtis, Sister Dean, and the rest of the nice family, a big family, uh, we just wish you the best. We love all of you. If anything we can do to help you in any kind of way. I was so glad when Curtis called me. I'm way down in Hampton. Usually, family, they don't contact people. You know, somebody else, you hear it some other kind of way. But he called me, and I appreciated it so much that he called me, but someone else had told me about it. And I'm just so happy to be here in support of the family. And I'm always friends. I don't promise to your friend. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dick and Robert, for reflection. And right now we have our obituary, Red Silent, some soft music. Give God the praise, glory, and honor. I these the words said this. Let the work I've done speak for me. Let the life I live speak for me. So when I'm resting in my grave, there is nothing else that can be saved. But, through the grace of God, the true words of comfort that He put on my heart to the family and to the waiting congregation. Because Sister Morton, I think Rob, she is at home right now. No more words. No more pain, no more suffering. See at home, to enter to a joy of the Lord. There is joy, unspeakable joy. Mr. Brother Curtis, you have done your job. You have been a blessing to her, like we talked. You, 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 was, you was with her from day one. And you stayed with her. God bless you. Let us turn to the book of Matthew. I believe you five minutes, then I'm going to get out your way. The 21st chapter. The 25th chapter. Beginning the 21st verse. Matthew 25, 21. Matthew 25, 21. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of of your Lord. For a word for the day, well done. Well done. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come right now, Lord. And we ask a special blessing upon the family, Lord. 
We ask, Lord, you comfort them, Lord, in our hour of grieving, Lord. Bless the son, bless the family, bless the closest family, Lord, the sisters, Lord. Bless the waiting congregation, Lord. Let these words go forth, Lord. May someone also remember what must they do to be saved, Lord. Lord, guide my tongue, Lord. And guide my heart, guide my mind. Let the words of my mouth and meditate in my heart, Lord. Be accepted to you, Lord. Be Lord my Savior, my Redeemer. Amen. 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 Well done. We all like to hear those words said, well done. Amen. Well done. When you hear those words, how does it make you feel? Well done. Well done. When a child hears a mother say, well done, it means a lot to them. It lifts their spirits up. It makes them keep on keeping on. Whatever they've done, they got a seal of approval. Well done. When a student here, a teacher, to say those words, well done, it makes them keep on keeping on, making good grades. When a supervisor tells his work, well done, it makes them work a little bit harder. And when a pastor Tell his rumors. Well done. Those words mean a lot to a personal life. Well done. But if you're lazy, if you're lazy, you won't hear those words. Amen. You might hear something else. But you won't hear those words. We have a parable here today. I'm going to talk a little about this parable. <coughs> a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Amen. There was a man that left his home and went out to a far country. Paraphrasing that. And he told his servant, he left with his servant some tithes. He gave one five, one two, and one one. Okay. So when the man came back, the one that he gave to five had made five more tithes. The one that he gave two, gave two more. Uh, but the one that he gave one, didn't earn any one. Didn't earn anything. He just hid here. But well, let's look at this thing now. The man represents Christ. He is coming back soon. The talent represents your ability. That God gave you. Also represent money, but we will put your ability that God gave you. Now look at your ability that God gave you, your talent that God gave you. He gave you eyes to see. He gave you eyes to see. Are you using your eyes to read the word these days? He gave you a mouth to talk. Are you using your mouth to tell somebody that you love them? Oh, yeah. To uplift somebody. Mm -hmm. He gave you a feet to walk. Are you using your feet to walk to that person's house and help them out or come to church sometimes? He gave you a talent. But some of us got more ability than others. I might cannot talk like you, but I'm going to keep on talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't, I can't see like you, 
I'm going to see the best I can. I'm not going to walk like you. Amen. But I'm going to walk the best I can. Go ahead. I'm not going to stop walking. Hmm. I'm not going to stop talking. <laughs> and I'm not going to stop seeing. So when he come back, he will say, well done, mm -hmm. my good and faithful servant. Right. And I've used what I have that you gave me mm -hmm. <coughs> to bring us people to Christ. I have studied your word. I have lived by your word. I followed your word. I didn't sit on it. And then he said this. You've been faithful over a few things. Over a few things. Not all, just a few things you've been faithful. He didn't say everything, just a few things that you've been faithful. I'll be faithful over a few things in our life. Sister Nanny Morton. Every time I go and visit her, she was sitting in the kitchen. I walked through the door. She had a spot on her face. I remember the words she used to say to me. How are you doing? How is the family? And next, how is the church? <coughs> a faithful. Remember the church? When she could come. And then, when she couldn't come, she was still faithful. Mm -hmm. More so the one that can come. <laughs> and I know that the word said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I believe that when our eyes closed and she went home with the Lord, that's where Brother Pierre said, well done. Well done. My good and faithful servant. Now let's think, even though if man don't tell you on earth well done, if you don't get a well done from your parents, if you don't get a well done from your teacher, if you get a well done from your supervisor, keep on going. Keep on praying. Keep on believing. Because one day, you will get that well done. My good and faithful servant. And he the one that count. Well, Curtis, to you. You've been there. And you know. There going to be some dark times. There going to be some good times now. But keep on trusting him. Keep on believing in him. And for me to you, because I know, well done. May God bless you. Have a spy upon, upon you. Much is you. Say child. Amen. Amen.
Other family members and friends, you can close in some of you like. Before I let it please, our Heavenly Father, it is why I believe that you take unto himself our beloved sister Nana Morton, we definitely commit her body to the ground, her stairs, as she asks, and dust to dust. Looking for the blessed hope and the Lord's appearance of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who will change the body of our humiliation and fat in you to the likeness of his own body of glory. According to the work of his mighty power, he is able even to do all things. Curtis and family members. Today as you lay me to rest, smile and remember it. God only picks the best. No need to continue to cry. I've earned my wings, now I can fly. He said, daughter, come with me. I have something better, you'll see. So when your days are lonely and your nights are cold, think of all the good times we've shared. They will never grow old. For I am now an angel of God, and a sparkle I shall be. Now know that I am watching over you. Just look up there and you'll see. Soon we'll be together again, 
But until then, God will be with you as he's with me. Mm -hmm. On behalf of myself and the staff of Duke Peace Mental Home, I'd like to present you this helpless blanket and may it bring you comfort and peace and joy in the days ahead. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come at this time, and we come, O oh God, asking you to please bless the food that has been prepared. And Heavenly Father, we are asking that you will bless those who have prepared it, and we're asking that you will bless it, that it will be the nourishment that our physical bodies need, that we might be able to carry on in a most physical way. We thank you, Father. We thank you in the name of Jesus. And now, as we look to you to be dismissed, May the grace of our Lord, the sweet communion of thine Holy Spirit, will arrest, rule, and abide within our hearts. Now, henceforth and forevermore, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 This concludes our full services for Mrs. Nanny Jennifer Wharton. And again, the family would like to thank you for the many, many acts of kindness and support that you've given to them. We ask that you to continue to thank of them and give them that support in the days ahead. They invite you to a repast in the fellowship hall. There are also tables set out, up, up, out excuse me, outside that you may sit as well. This concludes the service. <laughs> How are you? How are you? Good. How are you doing? Hey, how are you? Hey, sir, how are you doing? Who does she look like? You know who does she look like? <laughs> That's so sad. You get a minute. Hey, watch out. Wallet be haunting me. Excuse me. Uh, you got one right here. You just want to get a pin. Yeah. Okay. This is Let me. I'm going to the car. You gonna be okay? You need to get up.